programmers, how's it going? Welcome back to Introduction to C++. We are almost at the end of the first half of the semester of this course. Uh, by now, you should have been able to view my videos on arrays, Introduction to Arrays. So I hope that you have viewed those videos so that we can get um, on with more advanced array manipulations and iterations. So today I'm going to talk about iterations. So what I want to show you is actually a lesson on how we can find the sum of an array. Okay, so if you have the following, suppose you have the following array, okay, with which you have a size of eight. Your range is always going to be one less. So if your size is eight, your range is going to be size minus one, which means that you are going to go from zero to seven. Okay, and suppose that we have these values that have been entered uh, some way or another, either through a file or just from input. You have zeroth index, you start the zero index, that's the first element, and then the seventh index is your last element. Which means that if I want to iterate through this array, I'd have to go from zero to seven. Uh, and if I want to, the problem here is going to be I want to find the sum and average of these values. So let's say I want to find the average of these values. Well, simply put, if you were going to find the average of these values, all you'd have to do is look at this array, take the numbers, add them, and then find the division by 8, right? So you'd say 70 plus 85 plus 90 plus 30 plus 95 plus 82 plus 77 plus 62. Whatever result you get from that, then you divide it by the size of the array, which is 8. Okay, But in C++, it's not as simple as that. Right, because we all know that we have to kind of tell the computer to find the sum, do it in C++, and then also find the average after you find the sum. So usually when you're trying to find and you're trying to do operations in an array, you have to break it down into pieces. But one important point that I want to show you is that when you're writing code, you're not going to see an array in terms of the whole picture. So right now you're seeing the array is in the whole picture. You have to think like a computer. So you're really, when you're coding this, you're, you don't have the array as a whole available to you. What you really have is when you're trying to go through an array, it's, it's similar to going through a tunnel uh, in the darkness where you only see the first thing that's in front of you. And what do I mean? So for example, if I do the following, okay, and I see the number 70 uh, up front. This is the realistic leap, the realistic picture that you're going to encounter when you're coding in C++. You can't, you really can't see the array as a whole. What you can do is you can go through each element and you have to go through it one by one. So if I was iterating through this array and I was trying to find the sum, I can't just go through the array like we did with our um, manually and just take okay I'm gonna take this number this number this number as we did in the previous slide because we don't really have the array as a whole available to us uh, remember the computer can only do one step at a time our minds seem to just look at the array as a whole and we can calculate this either in our head or we can do the paper and pencil but when we're trying to do this in C++ you have to think about it in terms of a sequence that you only have one element accessible at a time. So on the top left, if you see, I am at index zero. So the only number I have available is 70. Okay. Now, what do I do with the 70 if I want to find the sum of this array? Now let's talk. Let's forget about finding the average. Let's just talk about finding the sum because to get to the average, you just have to find the sum and then divide it. But we want to do the average last because we first want to find the sum. We can't do the sum and average at the same time. Okay, so that's why in my previous videos I always preach that you do everything step by step. It's a process. Now I have the number 70, and at this point, what is my sum? My sum is zero because I don't have anything that I've added to it, right? So if I add 70 to my sum, what is my new sum? My new sum is going to be 70. Now, after this index, I have to move on to the next element, okay? which is 85. Now I'm at index 1. What is my current value of sum? 
my current value of sum is 70. Okay. If I add this to the sum, 70 plus 80, okay. So if I have a sum of 70, which is my previous sum, so if I go back to the previous slide, okay. Initially, I started with a sum of zero, uh, if you see on the top left. Then what I'm going to do is for this particular index, meaning for this particular iteration, okay, we are going to add the sum value, which is currently zero, plus what we currently have and what we are, uh, what has, what is available to us at the tunnel. Okay, so think about in terms of going through the tunnel, you are faced with this number 70 coming at you. Okay, and now your value of sum is zero because you have nothing else uh, that you've added to sum. And you're going to add zero to 70 and that's going to be your new sum. Okay, so your resulting sum is going to be now 70. Okay, when we go to the next index and we go to the second iteration, our sum has become 70. Okay, as you see up here. And what we want to do is now that we we are now going to the next element in the tunnel at index 1, you're going to add whatever you come across now, which is 70 plus 85. And that's going to be your new sum. Okay? And that new sum uh, will be represented and be used on the next element. So if I jump to the next element, 70 plus 85 is going to give you 155. And that's your current sum. After I get my current sum, and now we're in the current current iteration, we're in the current element, we're going to add the current sum, which is 155, and add it to 90. Okay, so 155 plus 90, we move to the next element, which is index 3, and 155 plus 90 is going to give us 245. So now we have 245 in our sum, and we're going to add that to where we're currently at. And as you'll see through, if we go through, we go to index four, we keep piling up to that sum, okay? And eventually, once we get to index seven, this is our last stop. We're gonna add what our sum is, which is 529 plus 62, and our sum is gonna end up being 591. If we divide 591 by eight, then it's gonna give us somewhere along the lines of 73 point something. Uh, 73.875 to be exact. So what you, what I'm trying to teach you here is that you have to go through the array one by one. And this is, think about this when you're coding your solution. You have to do it element by element. You can't just see the big, you can't, you're not, you don't have the big picture available to you. So let's go back. So initially we had this array, but we really can't, if you're coding this in C++ or any programming language, you really can't see this as the big picture. What you have to do is you got to think in terms of elements. Uh, we start with 70, okay, and now we have a sum which is zero, and we want to find the average. So we're going to find the sum first, iterate through the array, find the sum, and then find the average. So as I go through my array, I populate my sum with depending on what I come across. So I came across 70, and that's my new sum. Now I come across 80. Remember what my new sum is. My new sum is not zero anymore. It's 70. So 70 plus 85, that's my new sum. And I'm going to use that in the next element, which is going to be 155. And then 155, I'm going to add that to 90 and so on. So as we go through the array, we will end up with 591. Now, of course, I'm not going to give you this lesson without giving you the code example, right? It just wouldn't be worth it. So let's take a look at the C++ code, okay? So here is my program. Um, what I've done here is I've declared a constant of called size of eight, just because, so I can be matched up with my PowerPoint. And I've also declared a variable called sum total. So you remember that sum word that I had on the array slides? Yes, yeah, so this is gonna represent that sum total. Then I'm going to have an average. This is going to represent my average. This is what we're going to do last. Okay. This first loop is, is going to allow me to enter the test scores that I had on the slide. So we're going to do that. Then after I have my array populated, 
okay and if you don't know how to do this I've done this in previous videos so please make sure you watch the videos where I can populate an array so once I populate my array then I can find the sum as we were doing uh, in our previous slides we go from index 0 to size okay which you're really gonna go from 0 to 7 because once it hits 8 it's not it's gonna this is gonna tell you that it's gonna be false and jump out of this loop and it's very simple we're gonna keep a sum total and as we get to the scores for each iteration we're gonna add it to our sum total just like we were doing on the PowerPoint slides so on the first iteration where I is 0 my first score is gonna be 70 my sum is 0 as we saw on the previous on the slides so that means that I'm going to have for the first iteration my sum total is going to be 70. Okay? Now I'm going to have 70 plus and then this is now we we are in i equals 1 and it's going to be 85 plus 70 and it's going to give you the new sum total. And then we go again and again and again all the way up to index 7 where after I break out of the loop my sum total will have the value 591. After I get my 591, then I want to divide by size because I want to divide by 8. Remember, you have you still have 8 elements, you just have 0 through 7 access. Okay? And I want to cast it to a double because I want to have the decimal point uh, result. Okay? And because my average is a double, my sum total is an integer and my size is an integer. So if I do an integer division here without the casting, I'm just going to get an integer value. And it's going to you're going to try and put an integer value in average and that's just not going to work. Uh, it's not going to give you a compilation error, but you're just going to get an incorrect result. So the logical thing to do is I'm going to cast one of these uh, as a double and then with the logic of integral promotions, we know that a double versus an int is going to eventually give you a double. So this is going to be doing double division. And then once we have the average, we're going to have an average of 73.58875. Okay? So if I compile and run this, first I'm going to populate my array and I'm going to put in my score. So I'm going to say 70, 85, 90, 30, 95, 82, 77, and 62 and there you have it it's gonna uh, store my scores and then it's gonna go through the loop find the average and that's that's gonna be your average okay now if, to tell you to see that I'm not lying to you either uh, I am actually gonna print out the sum so the sum of the scores is I can print out the sum just so you see that we are getting a total so let's compile and run this. I'm going to enter my results again. So as I entered my results, my result is going to be 591 for my sum and my average is going to be 73.85. Now, if you want to practice iterations, like right now we found the sum and then we find the total, why don't you see if you can find the max of an array? Okay, so again, same concept. You're not going to have you're not going to have the array at, at once all available to you. You've got to go through it one by one. So if we were going to do this just in terms of eyeballing it, right, you know that our max value is going to be 95. Okay, it's going to be 95. That's the only hint I'm going to give you. On the next video, I'm going to show you how to find the max. And then another video, I'm going to show you how to find the min. And then we'll do some other things, uh, some other fun stuff with, with arrays. Thanks for watching. Name is Alex Louie. You can always catch me at parttimemagic.com or you can send me an email at parttimemagic at gmail.com. Thanks again. Happy programming.